Sometimes, a classic game soundtrack hits you hard, and for me, encountering Nathan McCree's score for the original Tomb Raider is one such nostalgia overload moment. Lara Croft's debut adventure was at the core of the modern 3D era of games, and during the late 90s and early 2000s, she became the biggest star in games. So it's something of a blast from the past that now, almost 28 years later, a remastered collection of the first three original games has arrived across every format, including the Switch, and from a remaster perspective, it offers a decent treasure, at least on paper. Improved models, textures, lighting and controls, a 120fps mode on PC and Xbox, and it also hits PlayStation consoles, and bundled in DLC, which we called expansion back then. This remaster comes with competition and new technology in real-time ray tracing. The free RTX Remix modification shines a whole new light on Lara, and it may just leave the remastered Lara in the shadows. Both games do much more than just increase the resolution, with a myriad of enhancements and features over the original version. From this video, we will break each element down and compare them against each other, including running it on genuine period-appropriate hardware for the Sega Saturn version, which is a true PAL, for us Europeans at least, and for the original PC version, I'm running on genuine Windows 98 Pentium 100 hardware paired with the very first D3D 2.0 ready 3D graphics card accelerator to hit the market, the S3 Verge. The RTX Remix modification is a download that requires the original DOS PC game. Once installed, it can be run on any ray tracing capable GPU, although it is much better on Nvidia cards, enhancing the original game with improved textures, objects, and most importantly, real-time path trace lighting. Now there's no better place to start than with the heroine who stole the limelight herself. She occupies a decent percentage of the screen real estate at all times, and Lara is one of the most important areas to focus on. The remaster wins this section hands down. Right from the main menu, you can see the original angular design of Lara becomes far more organic and fleshier. The original Lara model was made up of approximately 250 polygons, most of those in her face. The new model, by contrast, is likely into the tens of thousands, and it approves her face, eyes, ponytail, and pretty much every curve. Her model has been sympathetically managed within the original design, and sadly, this does not extend to her movement, animation, and physics. The RTX Remix is second, with polygon increases and ponytail also added in, but it is much closer to the original than the remastered version. Much of the original was data or procedural driven, such as ray casts on the environment for collision and climbing, to the gun and head movement that tracks enemies. For example, when Lara turns a single gun to point at enemies behind her or to her side, tracking their location by looking at them as they enter the bounding box. The remaster and the RTX mod both use the animation routines directly from the original models, be that running, jumping, climbing or swimming, they are an exact match just interpolated to a higher frame rate on both when in those updated modes. The main difference is that the remaster has much higher quality textures, features and shadowing, now relying less on pervertex shadowing as per the originals, guru shading and the quadrilaterals of the Saturn. The updated model is better, however, the update does look more like a mobile game or even as though it's been through an AI upsampled path than it does a modern game model, similar to the GTA trilogy on that score. The RTX mod is second best with sharper textures, more polygons and far superior per pixel lighting and shadows thanks to that path trace lighting. The remaster wins this section and it certainly takes years off our Lara. You don't behave like you got the monk's blood. I understand that somehow is in my favour, so indulge me about the dagger. I'd be indebted with your life. An important one, and really one that should be a simpler conversation than it is. The full remastered mode on everything, including the Switch, is 60 FPS. Aside from a couple of drop frames in camera cuts, it runs fine across both Series X at 4K, and when set to 120Hz output, it can also run at 120 FPS with no issues at all. 
Series S runs at 1440p60 no matter what you set in the dash. The original mode though takes authenticity all the way and is capped at 30fps. Now the developer of the remasters and the Open Lara update stated on X that the reason for the cap is that the old engine's game logic locks to that rate, a common issue with serial code back then. But interpolating the original graphics using a buffer creates lag, so we can assume due to the constraints of time, budget, etc. it remains at 30fps. That in itself is not terrible, but it can present bouts of incorrect frame pacing causing judder. These look random and are not obvious as to the cause, but it can feel worse than the old games on genuine period appropriate hardware. The launch platform of the Sega Saturn here in Powland took the 50Hz too literally, as it can hurt those frame rates. In Europe, we had 50 frames or fields per second rather than the 60 of our NTSC cousins in North America and Japan. Due to the quads the Saturn renders with, this can result in extra load on the machine due to overdraw caused by the warp sprite technique most 3D games use to render. In basic areas with little complexity and high polygon count, the Saturn holds an even 25 FPS or half refresh in modern money. Frame times can sit at 40 milliseconds consistently and as you will see, always remain consistent due to the inline frame production approach in the engine. It can suddenly drop, such as in this open bridge area, and we get some big 120 millisecond spikes to a 12 FPS low. It always remains consistent though. See that frame time graph just moves up and down and evenly with flat lines between 40, 60 and 80 milliseconds most often and the game's logic slows down while this happens. It's a lot like when you were playing old shoot 'em ups and the action got busy. Over on the DOS PC, the S3 Verge 325 can do better, both in visual quality and performance. Having launched a few months before Tomb Raider, it was a 3D accelerator that was often called a decelerator due to many games' performance being worse than when using the software rendering option. But paired with an equally top end for its time, Pentium 100MHz CPU and 128MB of RAM, this was a top spec PC for the day and we still rarely see 30 fps frame rates, albeit with far more stable textures and models and more details in the Saturn or PlayStation version. The DirectX 2.0 version though was only available post-launch in 1997, packed in with the unfinished business expansion pack. The software version can also run at 30 fps at times, but V-Sync is disabled and the impact to resolution and quality is significantly worse than the hardware version or the Saturn. This version has the option to disable both the perspective correct texture mapping, which is a Z depth, and the bilinear filtering, which can improve performance ever so slightly over the software renderer, but it's still often below the Sega Saturn and nowhere near a fixed 30 fps. High resolutions are also available, but even at 512 by 384 with or without the hardware perspective correct textures and bilinear filtering this 3D accelerator offered, we remain in the single digit performance bracket almost all the time. This does highlight though how good even the Sega Saturn was at the time versus the PC, let alone the PlayStation. The RTX Remix is the most demanding, even on my GeForce RTX 3080 with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D CPU, it hovers between the 30s and 50s at best when running 4K DLSS Ultra Performance at a 1280x720p 720p base. You can get a locked 60 FPS using 1440p ultra performance, but that impacts the image quality too much due to the sparse pixel samples and denoising filter having too little to work with. That said, it is still better than the original mode's performance, so it's not a complete loss. But the remastered version is smoother across a wider variety of hardware. 
At this point, I'd call it a draw. Both versions improve on the original significantly, and even though the RTX version does have high demands on performance, it can go to 60 and above, and the remastered version offers 120 FPS options, it's just a shame the 30 FPS mode has some frame pacing issues, as mild as they may be. The results here are not as clean cut. The remaster has the most increases in sheer surface and geometric detail with more curved and less angular surfaces, higher detailed textures with surface effects and even quasi parallax occlusion maps on ladders, though that appears to be broken on the Xbox here. The schools or movable blocks now sport concave and convex surfaces which increase the complexity and detail. Grass alpha, hanging vines and trees are now more 3D objects rather than 2D sprites that pan with the camera frustum. Many 2D billboards now become 3D rendered objects as well, something which was more common in the later sequels on PlayStation 1 and PC. However, this does not always mean the results are better. Water, for example, is quite limited with a simple specular and noise map on the surface as opposed to the animated texture of the originals. It also causes some gameplay issues with the flowing currents being obvious in the originals. They all use the same static surface map now, which means you no longer get telegraphed on a current or in which direction it flows. Water is far superior in the RTX Remix, on the surface at least with a more realistic specular and reflectance map along with a distortion map for objects below. This looks much better than the remaster. Once swimming in the deep though, the remaster balances the feel of the original better and with much better visibility. By comparison, the RTX Remix goes too N64 fog happy, reducing visibility and giving many of these sections an ethereal look to them due to the volumetric fog used. On the whole, the world details are better and fleshed out in the remaster, but they stray too close to the old versions for my liking and would have benefited far more from detail increases on textures and geometry in more areas. Unsurprisingly, both updates are drastically better than the originals when it comes to lighting, but both also suffer from similar issues. In the cold light of day though, the remastered version is not a patch on the RTX mod. A weak light map or vertex map GI is used in some areas both on walls and Lara herself, but this is not close to the full path trace global illumination bounce we see in this RTX version. Mixed with the extensive use of fog volumes as opposed to the remaster's mix of more alpha 2D fog, it never stands out or looks as atmospheric as the RTX remix code. I know the internet correction force will call out the obvious, who lights all these torches in the long lost temple anyway question, but this is a game and one about ancient made up artifacts, nothing here strays close to reality and in the aims of visual, technical and atmospheric quality the difference is night and day. The remaster uses more point lights with shadow maps and normals which help raise the quality over the blob shadows and vertex lighting of the originals but the shadow casting light sources are limited. It can pop on and off drastically with no blend with shadows just appearing and disappearing at certain points. The RTX version, however, calculates light and shadows from many sources at once, such as muzzle flash, which casts fleeting shadows of Lara or her prey as she fires. Light sources bounce and cast shadows across the caves, dancing in corners as you look around and bounce or diffuse on surfaces, presenting a far more ambient and more accurate light reaction than the remaster could ever hope for. That said, it can go a bit over the top, and I think more toned down levels of light sources and fog volumes and a focus on realism overall would help. I feel the best balance is somewhere in between them both, but on this front, the RTX Remix is head and shoulders above the remaster at all times, even if the hardware to run it well with good image quality is very expensive. This section brings us to the classic Mario 64 versus Tomb Raider question. Both solved similar problems, but only Mario was built around the precision of the analog controller of the N64, while Tomb Raider was designed for D-pad controls and a six-button pad. As such, 
the modern controls in this remaster are far worse than the original tank mode that the old game and RTX Remix use. Although mouse and keyboard is also great and an option along with the transformative first person view that adds to the game's controls immensely, along with the immersion not available in the remaster. The controls really fall down because it comes down to the lack of precision required, as the ability to walk slowly to edges holding the warp button is still necessary, but the camera is worse and causes more issues, and the controls are far too erratic. Remember, the original Tomb Raider was designed on a grid tile system for movement, which you can see in the world. You can see that Lara's walk divides each cell into approximately four sections. Each level is built around the slow climb, walk, balance, jump, grab, etc. repertoire of actions. The journey is the adventure, not the destination. And without the fine control the base controls provide, it feels clunky, frustrating, and largely not fit for purpose. As I grew up years before 3D was around, I find that I'm a little biased in favour of the tank controls. But the modern ones don't do themselves any favours. To win me over, they need to allow walking via a small push on the sticks, a larger one to run, and a safety buffer to not fall off ledges so much. They should track the cells in motion to help you feel more in control and lean into the precision offered by the analog sticks. They don't. Effectively, the modern controls paired with that terrible new camera make Tomb Raider play and feel worse and erratic, and I struggle to use them effectively. I also noted that the auto tracking and shooting of enemies is far less effective and harder in the remastered mode than the OG one, which may be to do with interpolation, bounding boxes or such, but you need more distance from the enemy for it to work as well. My advice? Stick to the tank controls and let Lara enjoy the climb. This is a lift and shift carbon copy, with an instant nostalgia hit when Nathan McCree's incredibly evocative music begins to play, certainly at fixed points in the title. It takes me right back to 1996 and those moments of tension or wonder as it kicks in and tips you off to something lurking just ahead. Lara's voice is the original lines recorded by Shelley Bond in the original and Judith Gibbons for the two sequels across gameplay cutscenes or FMVs. They also have a choice to run in a low bitrate original or AI upsample quality videos. This does clean up the video over the poor quality satin video CD, although I still love watching old FMV cutscenes like this as it was such a burgeoning and improving aspect of games from the late 80s to later 90s. Better MPEG compression and other innovations led to increasing quality year on year, but the RTX Remix skips all of this and is straight to the action. But sound is again the same as the DOS-based originals. Both largely rely on your personal sound setup, and it's still an amazing sounding game throughout, across the whole trilogy. And much of this is the superb Nathan McCree soundtrack. The very small and largely independent team that built Tomb Raider 1-3 Remastered have clear passion and skills for the legacy of Lara Croft. The enhancements offered are great and much better than, for example, the recent Konami Metal Gear Solid collection. High frame rates, dual, new and old modes, all of the expansion packs, improved graphics and controls alongside fast swapping across all three titles and expansion packs from the main menu are all welcome. However, and this is directed more at the owners at Embracer, this is a series and character that deserved more money and team size thrown at it to really do these classics justice. The AI-like texture and character updates feel as if this was designed with a mobile release in mind rather than PC, Series X, PlayStation 5 and even Switch. The visual enhancements are great and stay close to the originals, but a higher fidelity level would have been welcome. Both the remaster and the RTX version can suffer with lighting in many sections making it hard to see, which is not an issue in the originals, but the RTX version at least has a head torch for Lara in that third person view, which is far more logical and solves this issue that the remaster does not. The RTX Remix mod is extreme in its use of path tracing, but for a free mod that can be played by anyone with the original games on PC, it proves that had the remastered project been given more resources, it could have improved on that visual quality without the need for expensive ray tracing hardware. 
just as we saw with the excellent Doom and Quake updates. It certainly does not beat the remaster in all areas, but on a pure visual quality and technical level, it makes a much bigger splash and has better atmosphere. Maybe updates will come that can add more to the remaster and improve on some of the areas noted here, as Miss Croft should always look her best no matter where she is or what trouble she finds herself in. Me. And that's it for another deep dive into game, technology, performance and everything ray tracing related. If you like what we do here on IGN, then keep it IGN Performance Reviews and we'll catch you on the next one. Sins and fortunes of Marco Bartoli. Perhaps not just yet then.